Hey, hey, tech fans, welcome back to Tech Sidelines High Tech Studios located at the Virginia Tech Corporate Research Center for another edition of the Recruiting Roundup. This is the show where you will find the best analysis surrounding Virginia Tech football and basketball recruiting anywhere, period. If you haven't gone ahead and checked out our first two episodes, go ahead and click this little bubble that popped up on your screen to get caught up on all things Virginia Tech football recruiting news. Recruiting Roundup is brought to you by Tech Sidelines presenting sponsor, First Bank and Trust Company, where exceptional customer service comes first. They offer a variety of checking and savings account options that are sure to meet your banking needs. Since 1979, they've proudly offered free checking. Visit firstbank.com to learn more. Well, with all that out of the way, I am Nick Brown, your host today, and I'm joined alongside lead analyst and columnist and the red shirt propagandist himself, Chris Coleman. And behind the scenes, we have the managing editor of Tech Sideline, David Cunningham, punching the ones and twos. Let's start out this week's show, picking up where we left off. Uh, last week, we alluded to Virginia Tech having a good shot at landing IMG Academy safety major Preston. And, well, he went to the fighting Lane Kiffins over at Ole Miss instead of Virginia Tech. How does his decision impact the rest of this 2025 class? Uh, you know, it means they'll, they'll, they'll be looking for another safety, I think. Uh, ideally, maybe a safety slash cornerback. Uh, obviously, they, they like to take versatile defensive backs. A large number of the guys they've signed – you could say could play safety or corner. So I think that they've still got their eye out for similar players. Uh, but but I, I don't think that decision came as a surprise to, to them. I think uh, as it's turned out, it seems like he was leaning to Ole Miss the whole time, and I'm sure the tech coaching staff knew that, and they've been there – They've been doing their due diligence. Okay. Well, we'll start about the highlight this week. Micah Matthews committing uh, July 10th. Uh, Turner Ashby High School, Harrisonburg, Virginia. Chris, I know you're very interested in the baseball world at Virginia Tech. And not only does he impact the football recruiting world pretty pretty big time, but I think Micah Matthews committing to the Hokies is probably going to impact John Chef's bunch more. Is that a fair assessment? Uh. I would say he has the potential to. I think he'll, you could probably maybe accurately say that he's the highest ranked player to ever commit to Virginia Tech for, for baseball. I, I think you maybe have, I don't know, you could maybe go back to Joe Saunders, who was like a fifth round pick out of high school way back in 1999 and then eventually became a first round pick out of Virginia Tech. I don't know what his actual high school ranking was uh, or or anything like that. But, uh, you know, Micah Matthews is from a rankings perspective is, is sort of uh, like, who's the highest rated football recruit ever? Kevin Jones. Yeah. Kevin Jones was number one overall. So I wouldn't say he's quite (laughs) Kevin Jones, but for the baseball program, he, He's probably their best recruit ever, certainly their best recruit of the ACC era. So you look at him as as a baseball prospect and you think, yeah, high-impact guy, especially when you consider how well Virginia Tech has developed hitters under John Chef. Well, let's take a look at some of his baseball stats first since that's where he's so prolific. Uh, he's an outfielder slash third baseman, ranked as high as the 43rd best baseball prospect in the country, consensus top 100 player in the country. Uh, I want to give a shout-out to Goof Troop and QCP on the message boards for uh, getting us Baseball America scouting report. Ah. Uh, he says it's a power speed threat in center field if everything clicks. And like you said, Virginia Tech's really good at developing hitters. And I got to ask you the big question here. Do you think he will ultimately stay in Blacksburg after the draft next year? You know, he said he's going to enroll early in college. And if he does that, that would take him out of the draft, out of the baseball draft. Um, he could be saying that because he's serious. He could be saying that to gain leverage for the slot bonus negotiations and things like that. For those who don't know how the baseball draft works, it's not like the NBA draft or the NFL draft. Uh, you know, teams have a have a slot bonus, uh, an overall pool of money that they can spend that they cannot go over. Mm-hmm. Now, what they can do is they can offer one player lower than their recommended slot bonus, and if that player agrees to it, they can take the leftover money and apply it to one of their other picks and go over their slot bonus. So basically, if you're a college senior, you don't have any leverage in the negotiations. you're done. Because you're done. You can't go anywhere. So you can sign those guys for under slot and save the leftover money and tell Micah Matthews, okay, your slot says you should uh, have a signing bonus of 750 
but we'll give you an extra 500000 because we save money on these other guys. So now we're going to offer you a $1.25 million signing bonus. And that's how the draft works. And I think it, and how it works is if you're a high school player or you're a college junior or whatever, you talk with all the teams and you're like, okay, this is my price. This is what I would definitely sign with you for. Because you can get drafted and not sign and then go to college. Mm-hmm. Or you can get drafted, not sign, and, and go back for your senior year of college, although that do, that doesn't happen as much. Um, so th- there's there's a long, long way to go in, in this. Uh, he missed this baseball season with an injury. If he did enroll early at Tech, he would be a true freshman on the baseball team at the age of a high school senior who missed his junior year of, of, of high school. And that, that's, a, that's, that's difficult as a baseball player. Uh, you're jumping up a level while also missing a year and you've lost your timing. Um, it's really hard to play two, both those sports at the college level these days when, when it's year-round specialization. I think uh, if you want to dedicate yourself to football, then you have to go through spring practice. Mm-hmm. To, to get the most out of your ability, to improve the, you, the techniques and things like that. Spring practice is during baseball season. You can flip that. If you want to dedicate yourself to, to baseball, the spring practice of baseball is fall ball, mm. where, where the baseball team practices, is, and, and it's just all fundamental drills, hitting drills, fielding, throwing, everything like that, just doing the little things to make yourself a better baseball player. That takes place during football season, right? Uh, He's going to have most likely make a choice at some point. This is not like the days of the Bo Jacksons are are (laughs) over. (laughs) Yeah. um, North Carolina has a football slash baseball player right now, and he's trying to do both. And as it turns out, he hasn't gotten on the field for either sport. Um, And he was actually Micah Matthews' host on his visit to to North (laughs) Carolina. So he's he's a very good get for both sports, but at the same time, it's unlikely that you can say he's going to be a standout for both sports at Virginia Tech. He's eventually going to settle on one uh, if he matriculates to Blacksburg. Okay, and we know, and it's been rumored that he does love baseball more. That that's his first love, correct? I've I've heard that rumor for for, for quite a while. Okay, um, uh, um, but I, I th- it was he was once committed to South Carolina to play baseball. And that's when he, I think he real, he realized that he was uh, going to be a highly ranked football prospect as well. So he wanted to give himself a chance to do both. But you know, I think if you know, he might say differently. But from the people I've talked to who are familiar with him, like if you told him right now, okay, you have an equal chance of success in either sport, but you have to pick one today. Like, you're going to be a first-round pick in this sport. You're going to be a first-round pick in that sport. You have to pick one, and you can't do the other. He would pick baseball. Okay. Okay. Well, let's say he does make it to Blacksburg next fall and ends up in Brent's prize hands. And Mm -hmm. uh, he is a highly coveted wide receiver slash athlete, consensus top 10 player in the state, and consensus top 200 guy in the country. How is Virginia Tech going to utilize him on the gridiron? Uh, he's a wide receiver, obviously, just shy of 1,500 yards last year with 900 coming after contact. Big guy, but he lined up in the slot a lot with yeah. Turner Ashby. Yeah, yeah, let's say he can't hit a curveball and ends up uh, you know, having a football career at, at Virginia <laughs> Tech. Um, he is a big guy. He does line up in the slot a lot for Turner Ashby. I think he's probably an outside guy at Virginia Tech. He's He's got really good size. You know, he... He lists himself at like 205. Perfect game actually lists him uh, at 220. Sure. And if you look at him, like he's already filled out. Yeah. He's, he, would, he would enroll in college more physically advanced than, than most true freshmen, almost all true freshmen actually in, in, in football. Um, I think he'd be an outside receiver. Utah was actually recruiting him as a running back because of his body style. Um, it, it, he looks like a guy who might actually outgrow receiver at, at some point. He could. Uh, potentially, um, which is why I, I still think he looks like a left fielder or a third <laughs> baseman or something like that. Um, but uh, I think outside receiver, he's got a lot of strength. Um, he's a guy who is difficult to evaluate because he does not play against a good competition. 3A football. Three, uh, yeah, like if you watch his highlights, it's like a lot of 150-pound cornerbacks <laughs> who just there's no way they can, they can handle him. Yeah. Um, so I think he's pretty raw from that standpoint, and you you wouldn't get a really 
full grasp of what he can do until you see him against uh, better competition. And that's actually another rumor going around that, that he was going like th- thinking about transferring to LCA and Lynchburg just to face better competition. But I think I, I don't think he's going to. If that was going to happen, I think he would have done it mm-hmm. by, by now. Um, you know, I think his baseball injury this year has uh, – I think it's changed his plan several times, changed yeah. his way of thinking of, of, of the way he wants to do things. Uh, but like, if baseball didn't, if he was not a baseball player and you just looked at him as a football prospect, uh, it's a very good get. It, it, it's what he's want, but he's not not like a sure thing because you're not quite sure of the level of competition. But when you just look at him and you're like, yeah, that guy's got the physical attributes to be a very good player. Certainly. Well, there's a lot of variables around Mike and Matthews, but for right now, an excellent get for both Brent Pry and John Chef. Let's head over to the hardwood where Mike Young and company uh, made a big splash in the high school recruiting ranks with the top 100 and four star center Christian Gerdak. He's the second high school recruit in the 2025 class, joining Sincere Jones, the power forward, uh, resides from Gonzaga College High School up in D.C. He's rated as high as the 12th best center in the country and if I had to say that he's built like someone and, and plays the game like someone, he's six foot nine, two hundred fifty nine pounds. Keve Aluma, senior year, six foot nine, two hundred and thirty five pounds, and they mirror each other quite a bit. Yeah, and I think Keve lost some weight at some point, and so was he. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's lost. Uh, I think he's lost twenty five or thirty pounds. He was up in the two eighties at one point. Aluma was never that big, um, but he's a guy who I think if he lost a little bit more, could gain even better footwork and and i think you know once he really hits a college weight room uh, you know I, I think david jackson will have him in really good shape and he looks like a guy who can really be developed he's already got the, the strength mm-hmm. that you want oh, yeah. and seems to be a pretty good passer which you, you're always looking for that plus attribute um and as a center or a big man for for virginia tech one of the issues with the Hokies this past year is they didn't have anybody at the the five or the four who could do that extra, whether they're a great passer or whether they're a great shooter. Like the centers were very much back to the basket players who really couldn't do anything else. Uh, like Lynn Kidd was very good with his back to the basket, but he couldn't pass out of the post, mm-hmm. um, couldn't couldn't shoot from the outside, things like that. Tech Just, fans were spoiled with the Luma and Mutz. Very, very, very much. And, and, he, and Basili yeah. as well. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, who too. could really shoot the basketball. Um, so I, I think he, he could potentially bring – something a little more to the table, potentially in terms of a passer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think he's a very nice pickup. This is uh, two classes in a row where Virginia Tech has got a commitment from a top 100 center. Yeah, Ryan Jones being the top 75 guy from the previous season. Uh, Christian Gerdak's drop step, it, it's absolutely lethal. And, and like you said, if he loses a little more weight, he could even be quicker. Very angry at the rim, big-time <laughs> shot blocker, uh, plays with a lot of passion, uh, which you want out of your center. You don't want a timid guy down there. I got to ask you, who is possibly your, your third or fourth takes in this class? And we were talking to David earlier today in the office that, you know, the recruiting for basketball, it, it's it's more year to year now. Football, you can plan out in advance, especially with different position groups. But basketball, so much happens so quickly in, in recruiting. What's, I guess, your plan, what you would do if you were in Mike Young's shoes for the rest of this recruiting thought, class? Yeah, you know, I think it depends on who I thought I could get. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, now, Virginia Tech, they've taken a point guard each of the last two years, of course. So you don't necessarily need a point guard mm-hmm. in this class. Uh, uh, you know, you would lose High Seer Miller after this coming season, but you theoretically would still have two guys behind him if nobody hits the portal. Yeah. But that could happen. But in in that case, I think you replace the guy who left with with the portal guy. Yeah. So maybe you take a point guard in this class if you feel like one hundred percent that he's a right guy. Otherwise, I, I I would hold off. Um, you know, you kind of filled up at that two guard spot uh, this past year in the portal with a couple guys with with three years left. Um, Virginia Tech looks like they're really recruiting a couple of guys who can play the wing. Um, specifically more th- maybe the three spot. You got Jordan Scott. He's from Ruston, Virginia. He's a top 75 recruit. He's got a final three of Virginia Tech, Maryland, and Michigan. State. Uh, uh, Michigan State. You're right. Sparty. Uh, I have that written down. I just didn't read it for some <laughs> reason. Um, I, I don't think he is likely. Uh, Ryan Crotty, who's top 100 to top 125, depending on who you ask. He's from the Miller School outside Charlottesville. He's an outstanding shooter. This is a guy who... Virginia Tech ended up being the first Power Five school to offer him, I believe, first or second. Uh, 
Mike Young did not see him play until this past spring. If Mike Young had seen him play before this past spring, then he would have had an offer from Virginia Tech <laughs> from day one. This guy is a great spot-up shooter, uh, regarded as absolutely one of the best shooters in this class, uh, Six five wing from, from the Miller School. Um, his head coach was actually an AAU coach at Boo Williams and, and helped out with the dev- development of Justin Robinson and Chris Clark. Um, so, you know, there's familiar, plenty of familiarity with the tech program and everything like that. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, I think Virginia Tech, Crotty's not, I don't think he's originally from Virginia. I think he's from originally from North Carolina. I would say Tech's chances for him are higher than their chances for, for Jordan Scott. But uh, either way, I, I think both guys are a very good option for that wing spot in this class. Perfect. Well, the commitment season in Blacksburg seems to be quieting down. Is is there anything on the horizon that Tech fans should be looking out for? Can they finally breathe? They always do this Hokie Fest thing in in July, so I guess they'll probably do that Mm -hmm. later this month. Uh, It's not official visits. It's it's just committed guys or maybe some uncommitted guys come in and uh but you don't you don't take official visits right now but yeah recruiting's quieted down like june's the big month for recruiting because you take your official visits then and then some guys you know they start announcing in june and they'll announce up through early july but uh the, the rest of the summer is not going to be as hectic from a recruiting standpoint i think the Hokies have 15 commitments right now um I don't know how many of they'll take in this class. You just don't know because, you know, the portal, like how many of those spots do you want to save for the portal? Because, you you know, you're losing a number of impact players Mm -hmm. after this coming season. Um, So you're like, do do we want to save one of those spots for a replacement for Bishaw Tootin and and things like that? Or do we want to take one wide receiver uh, in this portal class, or do we have to take any? But, uh, you know, I don't think they'll sign like a 25-man class. Um, but, you know, I would expect five or so more. But, it's again, it's kind of about who you think you can get. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank you, Chris, and thank you, David, behind the scenes, and thank you all for tuning in wherever you are. We hope you have a great rest of your week, and we look forward to talking to you all soon, whenever that will be. Maybe we'll have a podcast. We have ACC Media Days coming up here at the end of July. We'll have the whole gang down there as well. So until we talk to you guys again, enjoy your week, and as always, God bless.